Coming up, we've got a new all-in-one laptop from Acer. We've got a speaker system that glows in the dark and sings along with you. We've got a boom microphone designed for the rigors of the stock floor. And we've even got ears that move, depending on your thoughts. It's all coming up on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. To get our special offer, go to Stamps.com now. Click on the microphone and enter Before You Buy. And buy Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to AudiblePodcast.com slash Before You Buy. Yes, welcome to Before You Buy, Twit's product review show. And this is a jam-packed episode. we got a ton of stuff to look at for you. I, it's just unbelievable. I think we're going to start with Father Robert Balliser because he's back with yet another Acer laptop. This is the Acer All-in-One. Father Robert, take it away. I'm Father Robert Balliser, the digital Jesuit, host of Twiet. This week in Enterprise Tech on the Twit Network. And I'm taking a look at the Acer Aspire 7600U. The 7600U is Acer's premier desktop all-in-one. Armed with a 27-inch edge-to-edge touchscreen, a thin and stylish design, and a handful of innovative features, the 7600U is a noteworthy Windows 8 desktop priced at just over $1,600. The 7600U is a svelte machine at 26 inches wide, 18.6 inches high, and only 1.4 inches thin. It makes extensive use of black accents and has a clear acrylic extension at the bottom that acts as a standoff. The motif is continued in the design of the wireless keyboard and mouse. Under the hood is a dual-core Intel i5-3210M Ivy Bridge CPU clocked at 2.5 GHz with a turbo speed of 3.1 GHz and backed by 8 GB of DDR3 memory. Ports, storage, and connectivity come aplenty on the 7600U. It sports a 1TB 5400 RPM hard drive and a slot-loaded Blu-ray combo optical drive. The left side of the 7600U has two USB 3.0 ports, a memory card reader, and the audio jacks. The backside of the unit has three HDMI ports, an optical audio out, gigabit Ethernet, and four USB 2.0 ports. Acer included a PCI Express mini card bay for future expansion. Rounding out the connectivity options are 802.11n Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and NFC. One of the standout features of the 7600U is the flexibility built into the mounting options. The integrated stand uses a variable resistance arm to allow effortless positioning of the screen at angles from 30 to 80 degrees. This arm also houses the power plug, meaning that a wirelessly connected 7600U has absolutely clean cable management. Acer also designed a solid aluminum mounting plate that slides into the back of the unit to give it VESA mounting capabilities without increasing the width of the unit. The display on the 7600U is a 27-inch 1920x1080 LED topped by stereo speakers and a camera. The screen is bright, beautiful, and responsive. Colors are rich and lighting is even. A GeForce GT 640M graphics processor with 2GB of designated memory make the graphics run smoothly and gives the 7600U an advantage over similarly priced all-in-ones. Additionally, Acer integrated two HDMI inputs that allow you to connect external devices to the 1080p screen and Dolby speakers. Switching is controlled by a flashy but somewhat unintuitive touch sensor to the top right of the screen. The real strength of the 7600U comes in how well its various input options work together. The 10-point multi-touch screen perfectly complements the keyboard and mouse. The camera on the 7600U doubles as a connect-like sensor allowing users to wave their hands to switch pages and tabs. After just a few short hours with the 7600U, most users will effortlessly switch between swiping, typing, tapping, clicking, and waving. Acer has done some really good things with the Aspire 7600U. The first thing has to be the styling. It's actually quite eye-catching. It's thin, really thin. In fact, thinner than an iMac. And not just at the edge, but all the way through. 
They've also included a couple of cues that other manufacturers miss. Things like the easy to remove VESA mount, which means I can put the VESA mount on a wall mount or on a stand mount and then lift the entire unit off that mount so I can easily use it on a desk or table somewhere else. Things like that multiply the functionality of the device. Things like the stand, which lets me use the all-in-one both as a standard monitor or more of a lay flat drafting table. I like when companies include those little design cues because it means that they're paying attention to what their users are using their products for. I also like the fact that it can double as a standard monitor. It has two HDMI in that can accept 1080p video, which means I can connect it to my PS3 or my Xbox or any other high definition source and have just one device that becomes my entertainment center. The last thing has to be the fact that it's just a complete package. Everything from the mouse to the keyboard to the responsive screen to the really cool, what I'm calling the Kinect sensor, which allows me to wow people with what Windows 8 can do. It feels seamless. It feels as if they're really giving me something that I haven't experienced before, and I like that. But there are a few negatives, some big ones actually. And the first one has to be the same screen. Now it is big, it's beautiful, 27 inches, it's uh, bright, it's robust, but it's 1920 by 1080. At this price, I kind of hope that it would have a higher resolution and then just use an upscaler to, to take advantage of it. The other thing has to be some of the component choices. It uses an i5 CPU. I, I would have preferred an i7, but I can get away with an i5. One thing that I cannot accept is the 5400 RPM hard drive. I don't understand how they could use it because you, you really feel the sluggishness when you're loading up Windows 8 or when you're loading up your OS. In an era of Windows 7 and Windows 8, it doesn't make sense for a desktop not to have an SSD if it's a high performance premium machine, which the 7600U is. I mean, it's nice, and most of the time I could, you know, sort of dismiss those negatives. But at $1,700, this should be a no-compromise all-in-one, and I don't feel like Acer is providing me with the price performance that I come to expect from them. So, buy, try, don't buy? I'd say that the 7600U is a try. I would normally have lent towards don't buy because of those negatives, but because of its usefulness, because of the fact that I can use it in multiple positions, because of the fact that they seem to get that people are going to mount this on the wall or use it as a drafting table, I, I say there are people out there who will really appreciate all the value that the 7600U can bring. I'm Father Robert Balasser, and this is the Acer 7600U. Father Robert Balasser is the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, which is every Monday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, let's see, 2100 UTC or 1800 UTC or 9, 8, 12 plus 8, 2000 UTC on twit.tv. I agree with him. That is a beautiful all-in-one. It makes me want it until I hear it's got a slow hard drive in it. Should be an SSD. Should be a faster processor. So close. So close, Acer. Just put a little bit more juice in there. And uh, I think that's, that looks like a winner. I really like the form factor and the uh, other features. Uh, that is uh, Robert Ballister. We've got now uh, Liz Lemon, I call her. Uh, Liz Romero, who is uh, our sales assistant and a vital bouncer here in the Twit Brick House. Mm -hmm. And Liz, you've got something to bounce with. I do. What it's, is this? Okay, so this is the Black Diamond 3 speaker. It is. <laughs> that's a speaker. That's a speaker. It is... Fun. Okay. So can I can I show you what it yeah, does? Yeah, yeah. Right, so you're gonna connect this. this. You connected it via Bluetooth it's to connected, your phone. Yes, connected okay. by Bluetooth. It has left and right speakers and a subwoofer in the back. Oh, so it's a whole system. It's mm -hmm. not just one speaker, huh? Right. Mm-hmm. And let me show you the magic of this speaker. Okay, she's using the remote control to turn on the speaker and the iPhone to play some music. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a light show. So it has all these different settings. Can you turn it all the way up? Yes, I can, sir. Let's see how loud it goes. That sounds good. Oh, that was it. <laughs> so it, it actually has pretty decent sound. Yeah, it's not room filling sound. It's, it's not, not great bass, but no. But this is this is something that's. Let me put that down. Echo Echo in our chat room says he's annoyed by it already. <laughs> would you would you have this? Would you play with this in your uh, in your home? This is something where I 
I have the jam box. I have all sorts of wireless speakers because I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, you are into uh, yeah. this stuff, yeah. We gave it to the right person. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where it's just not the best quality. And it's, this is something where you have to have a, a real niche for it, where maybe it's right. entertaining for your kids. Or let's say you have an office and you want to kind of like set the mood so you can have like some tranquil music and have right. just those colors going. So, How much for the Black Diamond 3 from Yan Touch? Mm -hmm. 120 that's 120 con. buckaroos yeah. all right pros and cons well the pros are just that it's really pretty it's very pretty it has a lot of different settings <laughs> it has a remote control which fits right in the back yep, like that right in yep. all that good stuff and considering what you get it the quality is not that bad but <laughs> <laughs> not for that price but not for that's the big con is the price yeah. and also that it has to be plugged in it's not portable it's not portable yeah yeah so for 120 and it has to be plugged in and it has these little certain niches if you have those niches i say try it i say don't buy don't even give it a try that's a, that's a don't buy. people <laughs> here are way too nice i'm training them not to be nice you're trying to be nice to this poor company because you feel bad that they put all that effort into a piece of junk it's a don't buy is it not who would buy that be honest with us <laughs> For 120 bucks, not great sound. It makes lights. It's for the ravers. It's, it's not even for the ravers. <laughs> you'd have to you'd have to eat a lot of ecstasy to be happy about that. Let me tell you right now, that is a don't buy. I'm gonna I'm gonna amend okay. your I'm gonna amend your review to say, are you nuts? <laughs> Do not try this at home. Thank you, Liz Liz Romero, our sales assistant. We thank you for giving us uh, your review of the Black Diamond by Yen Tech, the Black Diamond Three. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the first two. No. Yeah, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Chad has the boom, boom. a, a uh, an audio device designed for the rigors of the trading floor on the stock market. We'll see how well that performs. A little later on, I have an ASUS laptop, the Tai Chi. This is actually a very interesting idea uh, for a laptop. But first, let's talk about something everybody who does a lot of mailing needs to know. Liz, you probably use Stamps.com. Do you ever use our Stamps account? Or maybe you don't have to do any mailing. We've got the fancy Stamps.com scale that you can get absolutely free. Just pay shipping and handling. Stamps.com makes mailing easy. You print your own U.S. postage from your computer, your printer. You don't need a postage meter. No waiting in line to charge it up or to buy new stamps. Uh, you don't have to go to the post office at all. In fact, the mail carrier will come and get your packages, pick them up. You can even schedule free pickups at any time. It fills out the forms automatically, whether it's international, uh, express mail, priority mail. You even get discounts you cannot get at the post office, up to 21% on express mail, up to 15% on priority mail. And I love this part of stamps.com. It will fill in all the addresses for you. It can take addresses from your address book, from QuickBooks. If you're an Etsy or eBay or PayPal or Amazon seller, it'll get it from there as well. It even prints your return address, your logo, the sending address, and the postage on envelopes. you got to love that. Stamps.com. Now, if you want to be more pro in how you do your mailing, I want you to visit Stamps.com. See that great special offer, $25 in postage and the scale. And now we can make that better. Click the microphone and enter in before you buy. And that offer, that $80 offer, is going to turn into a $110 offer. That includes $55 in free postage you can use over the first few months of your uh, membership. A free digital scale. You pay only shipping and handling. $5 supply kit and the four-week trial. There's the scale. I mean, it's really sweet. Now, you can cancel at any time. The scale's yours to keep, but I don't think you're going to want to because it's going to save you so much time and money. Stamps.com. Make sure you use the promo code before you buy so we can get credit for that. Now, let's say hello to Chad Johnson, producer of Twit, Twig, Mac Break Weekly, and the host of OMG Craft, our show all about Minecraft every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, Twit. thank you. You're wearing the boom. I'm wearing the boom. Now, was... you're not, your audio is not coming from the no, boom. No, it's not. Okay. Our, our pipeline inside of the Twit studio requires XLRs, and these are we these. Can't, we can't do that. Yeah, right we yeah. can't do that. And this, so this is not Bluetooth. This is not wireless. No, it's wired. And, okay. and this is for performance that it, that it would be wired. Um, and I actually have a, a pre-recorded uh, review, so let's, let's take a look. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hello, my name is Chad. I'm with Twit and Before You Buy, and I have two products to review for you today, both from the Boom. I have the Boom Q and the Boom E. Now, what makes these so special to review? Well, you can see probably on both of these they have matching microphones. 
These are noise canceling microphones that help reduce background noise and boost vocal quality. Let me start off with the Boom E. The Boom E is a slimmer design than uh, most of the other Boom headsets. They also have over the ear headsets that are a little bit uh, thinner and uh, lighter than, than uh, the Q version, which I have. Um, but this is probably the thinnest and lightest. It goes around the back of your head. This is the single headphone version. So I only have one headphone on the left side. But I found out, I found that the headphone was pretty uh, dynamic. It, it, it sounded really good. I was listening to audiobooks with this one headphone and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It came, it worked really well for phone calls. The uh, speech clarity, uh, it was perfect for, for phone calls. Now, uh, this also has a detachable uh, wire headset, and you can buy adapters for the various phones that you may have for $15 on the Boom website. This uh, adapter has a volume slider and a mic on and off uh, toggle. Also, the Boom E comes in various colors, which you can buy on the website. Mine was red. I liked it a lot. Happened to match where I was placing it on my head, so it would disappear real nicely. Um, and the only, the only thing that I'd, I'd like to mention is that this uh, headphone did uh, get earwax a little bit. Um, uh, I got my earwax kind of deep inside of it. Uh, the only way that, uh, it, it's not too difficult to clean at all. All you do is take a pipe cleaner, run it through it, and you're done. So next, let's move on to the Boom Q. This is the Boom Q. It, Q stands for quiet. These are, not, not only does it come with a noise canceling microphone, but these are noise canceling cups. So uh, you slide batteries right here into the side and it has active noise cancellation. Uh, you can, there's a power button on the back of the uh, headset. The mic is detachable and the whole headset is foldable, which I really, really liked. Uh, it makes such an unwieldy headset much more compact when you can sort of uh, throw it together like this. The Boom Q also comes with a carrying case with adapters for plane and uh, you know the larger uh, quarter inch um, uh, headphone adapter. This wire is also detachable at the bottom and you buy a variety of adapters from their website to make sure that it works with your phone or your computer or whatnot. Uh, the little brick that's on this headset wire has the volume slider and then it has a sort of media button. This is a button that you'd expect on say a pair of uh, an integrated button on, on the line of the headphone. I couldn't actually get this to work with my Galaxy Nexus. Um, but that really didn't take away from the product. The, I mean, the product is a noise canceling headphone, uh, but I couldn't decline or answer a call with this button on my model of phone. Now then, the big selling point on these devices is the microphone. So to show it off, instead of just telling you, I went on a little bit of a road trip to show off the mic quality. So Chad, take it away. Okay, so first, Normal microphone sensitivity. Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. Finally, the boom microphone. Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. For nobody's toes are roses as Moses supposes his toes to be. Now, let's take this to the ultimate test. Let's do the same road. I'm actually going to circle back around and go the opposite way, but this time with the windows down. She brews a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. She brews a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. She brews a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. She brews a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot. So, Let's get into the pros and cons of these devices. Let's start off with the Boom E. I like the fact that it didn't have a, a large cumbersome headset that I could uh, throw it on, so I liked it, its lightweight um, uh, you know, capabilities. The mic quality, of course, is something to factor into the pros. For the cons, I didn't really like the cable design on the side of the head. Uh, it kind of pokes out and, in fact, 
uh, one of our hosts on Twit, Mike Elgin, uses one of these, and I've always wondered what that weird thing is sticking out from the side of his face. So I wish that they may have, I wish that the design may be that this was in the back or not right here um, next to your face, but small con. Next, moving on to the Boom Q. The fact that this does have active noise cancellation in the headset, uh, this could be easily used for someone who uh, wanted to take calls on an airplane, I guess. And uh, it is very comfortable. It was, it was a little bit more comfortable than the Boom E. Uh, I spent hours listening to audiobooks with these guys on uh, because the pads inside are really comfortable. It, it's just a, a really nice feel on the head. Also, you can use this uh, headset without batteries. You don't actually have to have the active noise cancellation on for the speakers to work. I ran into an interesting bug that uh, this left channel wouldn't work if the microphone was not in, so I had to have the microphone attached at all times if I was going to listen to an audiobook in both ears. Uh, but other than that, I, you don't actually need the batteries to be running all the time, only when you really want that active noise cancellation, which I really enjoyed. On the cons, I would say the fact that the headset had to be plugged in, otherwise the left channel uh, wouldn't run. That was a little bit of a con. But other than that, uh, you know what you're getting into if you want um, active noise cancellation headphones and uh, all of that. Now, the price of these devices. These are pretty much professional devices. If you are going to be buying this device, you're really hoping that you can be in the car and people think that you're in the office. Uh, maybe you are on a stock trading floor. So the price of these devices is high, um, almost because I would qualify this as equipment for your business, not really for a consumer. So both of these devices come in at $299, around 300 bucks. And each of the adapters for the phones cost an extra $15. And, and if you want both uh, headphones on this device, it costs an extra 50 bucks. So uh, this would cost $350 if you had headphones in both ears. So a little bit on the pricey side. I didn't put price in my cons because people have different amounts of money that they can spend. And if this is out of your price range, it's out of your price range. Uh, my buy, try, or don't buy will not affect if this is in your price range or if it's not. So with that said, buy, try, or don't buy. For the Boom E, this is a buy. For the Boom Q, this is also a buy. Buy for both of these devices. I really enjoyed them and uh, I think that you will too. Thanks, I have been Chad for Before You Buy and Twit. You still are Chad. I, I'm you have not Chad. stopped being I Chad. Always, I was we do have matching outfits though. We do, we do. <laughs> I mean, that's as close Absolutely. as you can get. Um, so I, 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 admittedly, these are, these are expensive, but you yes. pay, it's, it's, it's not like it's overpriced for what you're getting. You're getting what you pay for and it's very high Absolutely. quality. It's funny you should mention the stock traders because in fact, that's the boom was patented for use yep. on the stock floor. That's who you, these yeah. were designed for. Yeah, yeah. And back then they had gigantic old microphones. Right. And they've, they've uh, cons uh, cons yeah, what's the word? Condensed. Condensed. Compressed. Correct. Miniaturized. Condensed the, the microphone for a consumer <laughs> use, which is nice. Yeah. I, I, I like that. And it, boy, you. you could tell the sound difference. Really Big time. And difference. I want to point out, I did not touch up the audio You didn't at clean all. that up. Nope. No, that's no. just the way no. it came. That's why there were breaks in the audio. OMG Chad, host of Chadcraft, our Minecraft show every Sunday. I'm sorry, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Soon to be, that, that show is going to metastasize and spread throughout the network. Yeah. Like yeah. a disease. Every show will get a little bit, uh, get a Minecraft tip on it. At every show every is going to have a Minecraft tip every on it. Every show this will is have Chad's, a Minecraft tip. This is Chad's plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. That's Thanks, how we take Chad. Over the network. I appreciate it. We're going to take Thanks. a walk over. you got to see this thing. We, I've seen it kind of uh, on YouTube or uh, maybe it was at CES. This is the strangest thing ever. Kitty cat ears that show your feelings. Meow. Shannon, <laughs> Shannon Morse is here. Shannon is uh, the producer of this show and uh, host of 
Tech Threat Wire, I'm sorry, on yes. uh, the Tech Feed at youtube.com slash mm -hmm. Tech Feed. And soon I hope to be host of many other shows on Twit. Me too. Um, what you are wearing, the Neko Mimi. The Neko Mimi cat ears, which in Japanese translates specifically to English as cat ear. Neko, <laughs> Neko means cat no, and Mimi means ear. Now they're English. rotating right now on your head. They are. So the thing about these, and the reason why they're so cool... Wait a minute, you've got a forehead uh, uh, I do. thing. So this is a brainwave sensor, uh -huh. which is made by Neurosky, which is this company that makes brainwave technology chipsets that you can put into different kinds of headsets uh -huh. and use them to develop... Uh, for hospitals and for different technology. Like so this is actually like this. used in, in, in real professional environments. Yeah, they do your, have your headsets right ear is for twitching. that. Does that mean you're nervous? No, it means I'm interested. Oh, <laughs> okay. So what can this measure and how accurately does it measure? So it just it, it measures all your different brain activity. It's not going to measure your thoughts specifically, but how much activity is going on. Well, now there's different brain waves. There's what, alpha waves, beta waves. Does it measure a particular kind of brain wave? No, it doesn't. It just measures the electroactivity. How much? Yeah, how much is the going total on. total of amount of From activity. zero all the way up to 100%. Okay. And they so, say when you have high brainwave activity, that shows... That shows that you're, you have high interest and that you're focused. Okay. So starting from the very minimal uh, brainwave activity that I could have, if I was just very relaxed, you're right watching, now, which I'm not because I'm doing you're watching Dukes of Hazard. Okay. And, <laughs> if I'm watching Dukes of Hazard. And then the ears are what, deadly still. They would be deadly still because I would be of high interest. So they no, would perk up real is, fast. Okay, wait a minute. Now, okay. No, I'm saying Dukes of Hazard because you're not interested. So let's say you're <laughs> zoned out. What happens to the ears? They then flop. Then they just kind of flop They down. fold over. Yeah, they relax and they just bend over to okay. the sides. And and <laughs> you're obviously very interested in I what's am. going on. Yeah, so every time that I get interested in a phrase that you say or maybe I'm trying to calculate something real fast in my head, they will perk up okay, and they'll wiggle around. Okay, look at Tony for around. a minute. Hi. All the way down. <laughs> okay, now look at me for a minute. Hi. All the way up. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I think the ears speak for themselves. That's right, coach. <laughs> they, they actually... <laughs> Am I... Did that not they, happen just they, now? They actually so, work. So, they do work. Yeah. Because do really when, work? when Ozzy came over here earlier, yeah. they perked up really fast You're very and started interested wiggling. In Ozzie, my yeah. dog. I do. I want to steal Where's him. Ozzy? Ozzy? I don't, I don't know where he went. We got to do a real test. <laughs> so so th that's really interesting. But they are. And, and now, the one of the ears just twitched. What does that mean? Yeah, so if just one of them is twitching, usually yeah. I've noticed that that means I'm, I'm looking at something and I want to understand it. So uh -huh. I was looking at pictures of myself on Tony's camera the other week. Okay, look at this She's small so dog. Cute. Hi, baby. I love you. Her ears are standing uh, straight up. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, what is going on? Hi, come here. You want to see my kitty ears? <laughs> Neko Mimi? Is, you know? is this really So these are happening? definitely for a niche audience. These well, are for, like, your cosplayers. How much? How expensive are they? They're $69.99. Well, that's not bad. It's not. They I mean, used I to be I, around $100. If, yeah, if you said to me how much would these cost, I'd say a couple hundred bucks. So yeah, you would think they would because of that brainwave technology right. that's inside of them. And the fact that these are motored, you can pick out different colors if you want to buy extra colors. You're you can make your is, own. This is for cosplay? This is for cosplayers. <laughs> and I'm not one, but furries probably are really into these. I don't People know what that, that just, is. Would you tell me what that is? Just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> um, or people want to play with with brain science, I guess. Yes. But it's not. I mean, it's not. And there's a, a lot of development going on on Neurosky.com because they're open source. So right. they have lots of developers that come in there and make their own their own little apps that you can use <laughs> with their headsets. It's really, really. It's cool a little. Technology. I have to say, and and I'm surprised that you're willing to do this because it's a little revealing. It's like you're uh, you're an open book, right? You're, what's going on it in does, your brain is yeah. now visually. Do you it, feel it a little exposed? Open. Not really, because I, I, well, I'm not trying to hide anything, and you're. It's not showing it's a whole lot. That, I mean, it's just yeah, whether it's you're interested or not. It's not going to show you basically. exactly what I'm thinking, but right. you can see if I'm really bored about something or if I'm perking up real fast and I have a lot of interest. Well, now, wait a minute. How, okay. You now control these <laughs> because when you said can, bored about yeah. something, they pointed straight down. Yeah. And when you said perked up, they went straight up. So you actually yeah. can control these now. It, and it's really easy Did to learn, Did you just too. do that intentionally? I, well, not really intentionally, but it's kind of natural after a while. It, it comes Tony, to you you're nodding as if you've used yeah, these. Yeah, I mean, you I, did. Yeah. I, I show her pictures that I took of her wearing the, the ears, and then when she saw one she liked, her ear twitched, and it was really wow. weird. It's true. Yeah, it was... <laughs> 
they're so natural. So after a while, like if you if you try to concentrate on something, they're not going to do anything. Right. But if you just let it come naturally to you, if you're just going about your day to day business and you're trying to pay attention to what they're doing, but you're not trying to control them. Right. That's when you find out how it works and when it's I thought this yourself. was completely gimmicky when I heard and about it. And it's really not. It's yeah, not. I thought so too. I was like these are dumb and it's not worth the, the price at and all. And they now but come in leopard, black they come out in as leopard well as the and white. Black. You they have. have little devil ears. There's also tails available. Oh, that would get twitch. A cat tail. Yeah. I think that'd be kind of interesting. The tail would cute. twitch. I kind of want the cat tail. <laughs> pros, pros and cons. So my pros are they're really easy to learn. They're very natural. Uh, they're definitely for cosplayers, and I'm a cosplayer, so I really want to take these to oh, Comic-Con. you are a cosplayer. I am, What, what yeah. costume do you wear? I, I've done Sailor Mars from Sailor Moon and Ten Ten from Naruto. Wow. Iniko wa ai. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, and then <laughs> the you battery are lasts a long time. You the next Comic-Con, I can tell. <laughs> the battery lasts a very long time. How long? It has three triple A's in here, okay. and I've been wearing Days. these. Um, yeah, I wore them for like four hours the other day uh, right. last week, a few hours before that. So I've been able to wear them at least a full working day wow. and no problem with the charge. It starts blinking whenever it starts dying, and then it takes about 30 seconds to calibrate with this guy but and then this guy. Certainly long right enough there. to spend. Oh, you have to put it on your ear too. Yes, oh. and that's one of my cons is the fact that it is little bit pricey for day-to-day -day users just sure. if you're not a cosplayer if you don't catch this niche and this little earpiece right here can get a little bit irritating after a while because sure. it does pinch your ear slightly yeah. so if you're not used to wearing earrings or something that might cause some irritation for you and you feel it's accurate yes i do i feel very accurate <laughs> so try sounds like oh they are a buy for me a buy oh yes All so right. if i take them off can i, can I try show them? you they come off like that. Oh, so they're washable. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, don't know why you'd need I wouldn't put the motor ears. in the washer, but no. Let me, yeah, let you me can try put them it. on. Okay. So this goes on the back of your head. Yep. This and the sensor your on your forehead is bendable, so you can put it and on there comfortably. This clips onto your ear. Yes, Just it does. Just get around my microphone. I have too many things on my head. And then this goes here. And then you'll probably want to hit the little button on the batteries so that it'll recalibrate to your specific brain waves. It's mm -hmm. that little button. There you go. And then turn it back on. Oh, turn it back on. Yeah. So it takes about 15, 30 seconds to so calibrate. Also a nice head massage ready. while you're wearing these. <laughs> yeah. You can feel them moving around. And they're slightly loud, but it's not too bad. They're so cute. Are they supposed to be pointing in different Leo, directions? Leo, you look adorable. <laughs> they will. While they're calibrating, they'll oh, move one and then they'll move the uh. other one. Yeah. So after it's done calibrating, it'll start learning how your brain reacts Apparently to Apparently I have things. very little brain activity going on right now. <laughs> But it'll pick up after I'm a little fast bit. fast asleep. <laughs> There they go. It's so they're a very me. strange thing because you do hear them. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, going. <laughs> nee, 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 nee. All right, that's the Neko Mimi N E C O M I M I Brainwave right. Cat Ears, sixty nine dollars. You can get them online. The ears that respond to your mood. Can you tell what I'm thinking <laughs> right now? It's so cute, Leo. I'm thinking about Audible.com. Kawaii, Leo Chan. Whatever you say, what kind of mush? <laughs> The uh, the uh, audible.com, and then we're going to talk to Tony about the iFi. Can I wear these for the ad? You go right ahead. That way you'll know if I'm telling you the truth about audible.com. <laughs> <laughs> that is just weird. <laughs> Audible, of course, is my favorite place to get audiobooks. Frankly, it's the only place I go to get audiobooks. 100,000 titles in every category fiction nonfiction, mystery the best science fiction selection they actually have this audible frontiers program where they're recording classic science fiction that's never been made into audiobooks you can have wonderful listening uh, experiences when you're driving in your car uh, at the gym cleaning the house i really love audible.com and right now you could try it free get your first book free when you visit audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy, you'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month. Your first month is free, though. Your first book is free. You can cancel and pay nothing. Book is yours to keep forever, but I think you're going to want to stay with Audible forever just because of the amazing choices. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Yes, there are cat books. There are dog books, too. How do you feel about that, Nico Mimi? <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Audible Podcast. I, I don't know what to think. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy.
Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> You're welcome. Shannon Morris, make sure you watch Threat Wire. I want you and Darren of Hack 5 to explain, to tell me the truth about that power outage at the Super Bowl. Was oh, it a yeah, hack? that wasn't our fault. You guys have fault. to talk about it. That wasn't our fault. It wasn't your fault? No. I'm no pineapples there. All right. It's <laughs> YouTube.com slash uh, tech feed, and then watch <laughs> Threat Wire. And, of course, every week on Before You Buy. Oh, yes. Now let's say hi to Tony Wang, our editor-in-chief here at the Twit Network. As a photographer, I, I know I was very interested when the iFi came out, yeah. an SD card with built-in Wi-Fi, but the capacities were low. It wasn't fast right. memory. They've updated and they've updated. This is the latest iFi? Yeah. I did a quick review on it. Let's take a look. I'm Tony Wang for Twitter TV, and before you buy into that, I'm reviewing the iFi Pro X2 SD card. The iFi Pro X2 is basically a Wi-Fi adapter built into an SD card and comes in two variations, 8GB and 16GB. Uh, the price is a little steep um, considering the storage space, which is 16GB, and it's $99. It's very convenient to be able to take a picture with your camera and upload it to your devices, uh, either your desktop or your mobile phone, or the iFi uh, cloud storage service, which is free for a limited time. The setup of the device is very easy. Uh, it comes with a dedicated card reader uh, for the card, and I noticed that when I was trying to set it up with my desktop, it did not work with my personal card reader. And that's actually an issue um, that I found uh, in the FAQ on iFi's website that uh, this card might not be uh, compatible with all card readers, especially when you have uh, a multiple card type card readers that reads multiple type of cards. Pro the iFi card, um, it's very easy to set up. Um, it is simple to use when it's working. And that brings me to the con, which is that when it's buggy, it is very buggy. I'm trying to add a second mobile phone to my account and I'm having issues connecting the card with the phone and as well as connecting it to my iFi cloud storage. Buy, try, or don't buy, I'm going to go ahead and say don't buy. Uh, I'm not really sure if this audience really exists um, that they're trying to cater to. Uh, most of the pro photographers I know, they shoot in studio tethered, and that's because it is the fastest way to get an image off your camera. So having a wireless network uh, to do the file transfer might not be the most reliable or the fastest way to do it. I'm Tony for Twitter TV, and this is the i5 Pro X2. You know, finally, a size that's worth using and a speed that's appropriate, 10X, right. class 10. Yeah, but the difficulty I had was when I got a new phone and I tried to set it up with my new Nexus 4, I was able to essentially break the card. You bricked it. I bricked it. And, and this was during a, uh, some sort of Wi-Fi connection? Uh, yeah, like it was, it was it working fine. Does it have software the phone? Is so, that... yeah, I, they have a, lot, a very extensive FAQ on how to right. troubleshoot. And I was actually, I spent like too much time at work trying to get this thing to work. That's okay. So this right is now, part of the review process. So, right, you're so on the clock. When it was working, it was beautiful. Right. But when it doesn't work, I, I can't even get it to work. Right. So The other issue on this is it is an SD card, and a lot of uh, DSLRs still use compact flash. Right, right. I've tried adapters with these. They, they In my experience, they did not work. Right. So you really want to use it with a camera that does SD. Yeah, that's another, that's another reason why they included this was that. There's a reader. It doesn't work with most card readers. Right. So I, of, I, Yeah, that's interesting, yeah, too. You so, need your own card reader. Yeah. But I love the idea of being able to take pictures. Now, this is going to be obsolete as cameras more and more inc include Wi-Fi built exactly. in. Exactly. Like the new Canon... Right. 6D, I mean, that thing's beautiful. And yeah, pretty darn amazing that you could put Wi-Fi in a yeah. memory card that yeah. small. That's remarkable. Yeah. The i-Fi. Thank you, Tony Wang. Thank Tony, you. our editor-in-chief, he keeps all of this going and running and, and, and working, and we really appreciate the work you do. Thank you. All right, my turn. I'm going to do a review here of a brand-new Asus. Actually, it's not that new. We saw it at uh, CES, didn't we? Yes, we did. Miss Twitchy Ear. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is called the Tai Chi. We have the Yoga. Mm -hmm. That's from Lenovo. This is another uh, martial art. That's what <laughs> right. Tai Chi. It does not fold over anything. It actually looks like a standard, pretty standard Ultrabook. And in fact, it is a pretty standard Ultrabook. Ships with Windows 8. The biggest difference is that, and th by the way, this is not a touch screen, but on the other side, it is. So I've got Windows 8 running here. Let me just, uh, oh, it, you see, here's problem number one. 
That ain't a touch screen, kids, so I've got to do it here with the mouse. Yeah, um, Leo, can I just say in. that I was actually very excited about the Tai Chi. I pre-ordered I pre-ordered you, one. You actually bought this. Right, I pre-ordered. They canceled my order, and then they went back to the drawing board. So the original design was touch screen on both sides. There must be an issue with having touch screen. So right. When he says both sides, that's what's interesting about this. Now, watch. I'm going to close this, and the back which looks like just a standard glass back as it would be on an HP Elite, lights up. It is now a Windows 8 tablet, which does have touch and actually is a very competent tablet. We've got the Windows uh, key here that lights up. Uh, you're able to do everything you would do on uh, a Windows 8 tablet. This is Windows 8 Pro. This is not RT. So it's a full Windows 8 operating system. And in this form factor, it's great. These are 1080 P screens. Both screens are IPS LCD screens, so they're good quality. Uh, as equipped, this one is with a uh, i5, 1.7 gigahertz Ivy Bridge i5. I think you can spend a little more money and get something a little higher end. Four gigs of RAM. It is unfortunately uh, the Intel motherboard graphics, the HD 4000 graphics. Uh, 128 gig SSD in this model, although you can go to 256. Um, and it's got a pretty good complement of uh, features. You know, it's got uh, the USB 3, two USB B3 ports. It's got a mini uh, HDMI port, micro HDMI port, mini display port. They said NFC was built in here. I don't know how you would find out or use it, but I guess you could tap this to things if you had <laughs> NFC chips somewhere lying around. Uh, so I, I think all in all, a nice notebook. Uh, it's got backlit screens. These are uh, backlit keys. These are nice chiclet keys. The trackpad was glass and very easy to use. It's lightweight. It feels good. It's fairly thin. Uh, it does remind me of the HP Elite a little bit with this glass top, but unlike the HP Elite, this is an actual, I love it, an actual touch screen. Pros and cons uh, on this, uh, well, uh, the obvious uh, uh, con is that this is not touch on the screen here. And that is very confusing. A pro is that you can have your presentation going on this side and you can be presenting because both screens can be on. You have to set it up that way. And people could be, they even say the kids could be watching a movie on one side while you're, while dad's working on the other side. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> um, but I do love the fact that this is now a very credible tablet without doing all that tablet conversion mm -hmm. stuff. I think that's great. Uh, so that's a pro. These are good screens. The con is that this really feels like it should be a touch screen, and you're going to get confused moving back and forth from mouse to touch. Uh, also a con a little bit is uh, the price. This is a fairly expensive uh, as configured $12.99. It goes up if you want an i7, or uh, they have a 13-inch screen. This is an 11-inch uh, screen. Um, so, Tony, you decided not to buy it after you well, saw that this yeah, was so they touch. So they canceled my order, and I was very confused, and so there was no ETA. And right. not only did they cancel, I didn't know they changed the display as well. Yeah, that's the big change here. Yeah. Uh, it is, and you can see, it's a gorgeous IPS display. I mean, they've done a very nice job. We looked at an Acer Ultrabook uh, last week, and I, I gave it a do not buy because this was such a dim screen. This does not have that problem. Colors are rich and vibrant. It's IPS, which means you can see it at a lot of angles. It really is a good-looking screen. This is a very credible tablet, very usable. You can see it switches fairly quickly uh, from the laptop mode to the tablet mode. Uh, this works fine. It comes also with a stylus. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why you don't need a stylus. Like all Windows 8 tablets, you can use your fingers. It's a, it's a capacitive uh, screen, but I guess if you like working with a stylus, you can do that two-button stylus. Um, boy, I don't know. I, I have to say, uh, given the price and the fact that you're probably going to be confused... If this is a nice laptop in every respect, if this were touch, it would be a definite buy. But at this point, I have to say, do not buy because this is going to drive you crazy. You're going to want to use this as a touch screen. You can see my fingerprints are all over it. Even when I started the review, I tried to touch it. This is a nice tablet. If this were only a touch screen when it's open, I would say right. it's a buy. But at this point, I have to say, uh, do not buy because, unfortunately, uh, just it's just it's just too weird not to have this in every other respect very nicely made it's got metal it's got bno sound this is a metal top i mean i think they've really done a nice job it's fully equipped uh 12.99 is a little high for an ultra book but given what it's doing i think it's not awful um i just can't say buy it right now isn't that cool though i mean i think that's a yeah. neat like idea it. yeah i think i would even consider purchasing this as just a laptop if they didn't have the tablet well, that's, included, you know, if, if it was a cheaper price. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, if this were eight ninety nine, this would be an excellent Ultrabook. Mm -hmm. It would be a, yeah. a no question. It would be an Ultrabook, and you happen to get a tablet mm -hmm. uh, as well. Her ears are pricking up on that one. <laughs> that is the Acer, I'm sorry, Asus Tai Chi. 
Uh, by the way, uh, I should probably mention that there is the usual uh, component of crapware mm -hmm. on here. Uh, not more or less than anybody else. It's not too bad. Um, you get a few extra services, the antivirus and all of that stuff. Um, battery life, uh, I found, was okay. Not great. About five or six hours. Not bad. Uh, okay. That's it. Wow, I'm exhausted. This was a very <laughs> long show. From cat ears to iFi to headsets. We want to thank all of our reviewers. Uh, of course, Father Robert Balliser, uh, Liz Romero, uh, OMG Chad, Shannon Morse, um, Tony Wang. Did I leave anybody out? Did I get everybody? Wait, also Leo. And me. Yes. <laughs> I thank you for watching. Remember, all of these videos are up on our uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash before you buy. And, of course, you can always watch us do this show live. We do it Tuesdays uh, right after the Gizwiz. That's about uh, 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. But if you can't watch live on-demand versions are also available. The full show uh, on uh, twit.tv slash BYB and wherever podcasts are available, audio and video available, and the YouTube channel if you want to see individual reviews as well. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Remember, you got to watch before Bye. you buy.